I'll be taking you through a little bit of CCF Namibia um, and my role there as a GDP broker. Um, so for those of us, yeah, that haven't met before, um, I am originally from um, Cochrane, Alberta. Um, I went to UC and graduated in 2015 with a Bachelor of Science and a major in Ecology. Um, I wrote my last two university exams on December 21st, 2015. I was in Namibia on January 7th of 2016. So I didn't actually know that I passed all my university exams. Luckily I did, so it wasn't an issue. Um, but I basically finished school and I was out living in an adventure. Um, I was supposed to only be in Namibia for four months. And my four months very quickly somehow turned into eight years. Um, and I don't quite know how that happened. <laughs> but I um, am back now. I moved back to Cochrane uh, in May of this year. So it's pretty new for me to be back. Um, but yeah, eight years in Namibia. As Carolyn said, um, I initially started out as a intern and then was hired on as part of the Cheetah team in, uh, after eight months of me being an intern. As the Cheetah Keeper, as I said a little bit before, I was part of a much larger team at the center. Um, includes education, ecology, tourism, veterinarians, farm managers, um, and so many more. We were a team of about 120 people in total at CCF. Um, only two to three of us at a time were actually on directly on the Cheetah team. So you can see we were three out of about 120 people in total. Um, and though we were in a lot of different departments, there was a lot of overlap. Um, so to try and give you an idea of my role within CCF Namibia, and how it played into the larger part, um, I'd like to tell you a little bit of a story. Um, and this story is about a cheetah named Calypso. This was how I first met Calypso. Um, human wildlife conflict is a common occurrence on farms in Namibia. 90% um, of cheetahs, wild cheetahs living in Namibia, are found outside of protected areas, which means that they are found on farmland. Because of the work of our education and outreach teams um, that's been done over many, many years, a lot more farmers now are calling us rather than dealing with the problem themselves. If they lose livestock to a predator like a cheetah, um, and they're able to catch that cheetah, they call us instead of dealing with the problem themselves, which we um, greatly appreciate. So this call about Calypso uh, came from a farm in the southeastern part of Namibia. And the call came in actually to our scat detection dog manager, Tim. Tim had done some work on this farm previously with our scat detection dog, Enya. Um, and he had a really good relationship with this farmer. Calypso and her two subadult cubs had killed a calf inside the corral uh, earlier overnight. So his workers set up um, these trap cages and they were able to catch uh, Calypso and her two cubs later in that afternoon. So you can see in the bottom right there, those are his cows in the background. And this is a little bit unnatural for a cheetah to be so close to livestock and into people. Um, so we were a little bit curious why this happened, but it could be just because she had two cups with her. It was in the middle of a dry season that she had resorted to catching something that was really easy so she could feed her and her family. As much as we would love to rescue every cheetah that we get a call about, it's actually not our decision to make. Um, our partners in these decision making is the um, part of the Namibian government. It's the Ministry of Environment, Forestry and Tourism. They come out on every single call with us and they have the final decision on what will happen with this cheetah, whether it might come to CCF or MEFT also has the resources and the capability that they could be releasing these cats as well. And so any cheetah that we receive to CCF does come with a transport permit and we cannot do anything 
before MEFT is approving that decision. Calypso and our cups were considered a good um, release candidates, and we didn't have callers available right away to us. And so MEFT made the decision that the cats could come to CCF temporarily um, until the callers were ready and available, and then they could be released uh, from there. So they arrived to CCF. Um, they are put into any new cheetah that comes to us is put through a quarantine procedure. Um, while normally they are pretty healthy when they come to us, we just want to avoid any potential health disease transmission that might happen between wild cats and our captive cats. But as well, we want them to be in a quiet location away from the main center, away from people. Naturally, cheetahs are very, very shy. They hate human interaction. They want to be as far away from us as they can. And so these quarantine pens allow us to keep them calm and keep them um, contained while they are with us. We did uh, veterinary workups on each of the cats just to make sure that they were healthy. So we did blood draws. We gave them uh, individual identification microchip numbers, much like your little pet has a little chip that goes underneath their skin, did a physical exam, um, and all three of them were very, very healthy. Calypso as mom, and then her male and female sub-adult cubs. We did a second workup on them once the callers arrived, and then they were ready to go. But now the difficult decision um, came. Where can these cats be released to? We don't ever want to just chuck the cats out and say, okay, good luck, bye, it was nice knowing you. Um, we want to give them the best chance of survival that we possibly can. And ideally, the cats do come back to where they came from, um, or at least within the same region. Sometimes it's not always possible, though, uh, depending on the farmer. So CCF Namibia is located kind of up north uh, near Ochirongo. Um, these cheetahs came from just outside of Clavis, which is in the southeast, almost on the border with Botswana. And these two locations on the map look very, very close. Um, don't be deceived, though, because in reality, it's about a six hour drive from Ochi to Clavis. But thanks to the relationship that Tim had built with his farmer and because of the work of our ecology team with the GPS callers, the farmer allowed us to release these three back onto his property on the condition that we set up an early warning system with the callers. And what we can do using the GPS system is set up an invisible fence um, around the farmer's property. And if those GPS callers come in contact with that invisible fence, it gives us a warning, which we can then pass on to the farmer. He can then make decisions on how he's gonna manage his livestock with predators in the area. Maybe he brings his calves into a more secure area. Maybe he brings all of his livestock in and that avoids um, any potential human wildlife conflict while the cats we know are in the area. So this is some of the GPS data that we received from the three cats. Uh, the red dots are Calypso. The blue dots are her uh, male cup and the purple is her female cup. So shortly after being re-released, the cubs did split from mom, which we were expecting because they were about a year and a half old. And that's about the time that they do become independent from mom. Um, what we weren't expecting was that Calypso started to show clustering behavior, which was indicative of her having cubs shortly afterwards. And those three orange circled clusters show potential den sites. Um, gestation's only about three months in cheetahs so it was possible maybe she was very early pregnant when we first met her and then she had her cubs a few months after we re-released and even though the gps system on the collars might seem pretty simple we're able to get a lot of information from them um, we get signal from the gps collars every four hours and when we see a cluster point like this um, it tells us that Unfortunately, it's not normally a good sign because that collar hasn't moved in 24 hours. And when we checked this cluster, unfortunately, we did find Calypso deceased. 
and we think that potentially she got bitten by a venomous snake, um, something like a black mamba, which are quite common in Namibia. Because of those cluster points that we had seen on the previous map, we did check those clusters. We found not one, not two, but three orphaned cubs who unfortunately suddenly had no mum. And they were about two, two and a half months old. Um, and there was one male and two little females. Again, the decision to bring these cubs into captivity was made in agreement with MEFT, and it was a big decision to make with these cubs. By our standards, these cubs were not released candidates because they were under the age of six months old, and that means permanent captivity. And that could mean between 13 to 16 plus years um, with us. So MEFT was with us every step of the way. You can see on the right there, that's Calvin. He is our regional MEFT officer. Um, and he was with us from pickup all the way until their arrival at CCF and through their first vet check um, with our veterinarian, Anna. Um, I can't say enough good words about our veterinary staff um, who, like us, they kind of have to drop everything when we get a call like this. Um, but they're always available. They're always willing to help um, if anything is needed, which kudos to the vet team. We love them a lot. <laughs> um, so now we have three little cups. Now the fun can really begin. Cue the U's and O's. Very, very cute. Little baby cheetahs. Um, we love them dearly. Um, little fluffies, as we call them. Very, very cute. And do I have the best job in the world? Yes. Yeah, I think I do. Um, however, in reality, this is what my life looks like. And if you want to know what the day in the life of a cheetah keeper looks like with three little two month old cups, this is what it looks like. Uh, feedings every two or three hours. I lived by the alarm arms on my phone that told me what to do and when to do it. Um, and this was only three out of the 30 plus cheetahs that we had at the time to take care of. And so everybody else needed to be fed. They needed to have water. We needed to make sure their enclosures were secure. We had cheetah runs to do. We had behind the scenes to do. We had center feeding presentations to do. We still had 100 visitors in a day to take care of. Um, so it's a lot. Um, and while babies are very cute, um, they are also very fragile. Small changes like a loss of appetite, um, can be a huge red flag. And if it's not dealt with right away, um, can lead to not very nice consequences sometimes. And sometimes it's a really easy fix. Um, like Tasia, he needed a splint, uh, for a little funky leg that he had. We think due to a nutrient deficiency, which cleared up really easily, but he felt very sorry for himself having to move his leg bandaged. Um, Cora up in the top right, uh, or sorry, no, she, uh, that's Hadassah, sorry. Hadassah was running and playing one day um, outside. She um, got some dirt in her eye and <laughs> she looked at us like this for a good hour. Um, and so we just needed to flush out our eye she was right as rain again. Um, some of the fixes are not so easy. Uh, Cora decided she needed to be the best big sister she could be, and she was going to groom her brother. She groomed Tasia down to his skin. Um, she had licked out all of his fur on his belly. She ingested the hair, and then that led to a blockage in her digestive tracts. And that was about two weeks of medication and treatments and a lot of poop pictures, um, which thank you again to the vet team. I'm really sorry that I'm a worry wart of a mom and I send them a lot of poop pictures when my cheetahs aren't feeling good. Um, but it kind of created another little fun story. Um, Cora, original name uh, from me was PC. And if visitors ever asked, PC stood for perfect cheetah, um, but I will let you guys on a little secret that PC actually stood for problem child because she was my problem 
my problem girl. She just was always in trouble. But even after all of our little adventures that we had, um, everything turned out, still turned out okay. Um, I can't get these three to all look at the camera at the same time, but that's a, that's a me problem. I'm not a them problem. They are perfect. Um, we had a help a lot, a lot of help along the way though. Um, and I am forever grateful to the CCF Namibia team. Um, I'm pretty lucky to have been able to work with a pretty amazing team of people from the cheetah team to the vets, ecologists, crowd staff, farm managers, tourism, education. Um, we were a family and we are always looking to add people to that family. So considering yourselves part of not only the CCF Canada, but also the CCF family. And I will leave you with this picture of Dominic, who I didn't get to speak about, but he is my first child. And if you ever ask me who my favorite cheetah is, as Carolyn said, I don't have favorites. Um, <laughs> I love them all for different reasons. But Dom is, is top of my list, if you ever ask me, because he is perfect. Um, but that would be a whole other presentation that I don't have time for. So thank you so much um, for your contribution, not only to the Cheetah Fit Challenge this year, um, but also for your support of CCF and the work that we get to do. And that's all.